Welcome to another TiddlyWiki tutorial. I've been using TiddlyWiki for several months now and it's easily my favorite note-taking program. It has all the bells and whistles of a wiki and it's saved to a single file that's easily deployable. Uh, there's just a lot of things that I like about this, uh, you know, about what uh, Jeremy Rustin has put together here. And the design is like anything I've ever seen. It, it's uh, the layout of TiddlyWiki. Uh, I can easily coin the phrase that it's a Rustin layout. <laughs> Everything is packaged into one little unique file that is uh, can be passed on easily. If you log on to tiddlywiki.com, you can download this by just scrolling down the page and you're looking at a TiddlyWiki. Uh, here we have a, a contents tab that's been made and information's laid out and placed in uh, you know, a hierarchy that's easily understood. Uh, this can be done. There's a lot of different ways that you can take notes with this. Whatever is easier for you. Uh, I've created some other tutorials about how to create the contents tab and do some other things just to be familiar uh, it's just so you can start using TiddlyWiki. But here's the crutch. Um, a lot of people have a trepidation about using TiddlyWiki because it's, uh, uh, how do you start it? How do you use it? Uh, it is an HTML page. And if you just open it up in a browser, there's some security measures that prevent you from actually editing that HTML page, uh, which is understandable. So let me go ahead and start with downloading TiddlyWiki here. And uh, you right click to save. So I'm going and I'm doing this from a Mac. This is easily accessible on any operating system because it's an HTML page. And the program that I'm going to show you, uh, introduce you to, uh, runs on just about any operating system too. It has several distributions. So I'm going to save this to my desktop as tiddly.html. There we have it. I'm working from a second screen here, so I'm dragging this over. So here's the tiddly HTML. I'm going to just show this off for you real quick. And this is really what got me. TillyWiki is just a glorified web page. All of the code is wrapped up in one HTML file. It's it's amazing. And it adds to itself and it grows. If you add images to TiddlyWiki, you can embed them into that HTML code. Uh, similar if you're embedding them into your CSS file. Um, you know, just coming from a web developer and working with uh, Tiddly, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a really a beautiful design. And I can take this HTML page once I've edited it and drop it anywhere. And like here, it's on tiddlywiki.com. It's just an index.html page that's a tiddlywiki. Everything is encapsulated. This, All of this that you're looking at is in the single file that you're downloading, parsing, and working, working out here. So uh, again, the trepidation is, is that, you know, if I double click on this, I, I can't use this. Whatever I do to this page, it's not going to save to the HTML because of the security measures that are in place. Uh, you know, they're built into the browsers. That's just understandable. Uh, what some people have done is install a plugin that uh, has been created by Jeremy to uh, edit this HTML page. So it bypasses those security settings in the browser and actually edits the HTML file. Uh, the problem with that uh, recently is that Mozilla has really 
uh, I've had a lot of issues with it here recently in the latest distributions. Uh, I don't know if it's got a memory leak. Uh, it's just, it's doing some crazy things. I noticed that uh, I, I was crashing my uh, Tilly wiki and losing information and it was getting frustrating. Uh, and I wasn't backing up often enough. But that's where Tilly desktop comes into play. And uh, I'll leave the URL in the description, but I would encourage anyone that's really wanting to use the Tilly Wiki to try out the Tilly desktop. And for those that are unfamiliar with pl browser plugins or what it's actually doing, using the Tilly desktop is it's more easily understood, um, you know, because it's a secondary program that you're downloading onto your system to access this file to actually edit it. Because again, any information that you add to your TiddlyWiki is actually being saved in, uh, you know, I closed it now, is actually being saved in this uh, HTML, single HTML file. So uh, I'm gonna go to the, uh, it, the, the code can be downloaded from GitHub. So I'm just gonna do a quick search again. Um, I'll have a URL in the description. This is a Tilly desktop. So I'm just searching uh, for uh, Git, I'm searching uh, GitHub for Tilly desktop. And the first thing that should come up is uh, Jeremy's uh, GitHub account. And uh, you'll be scrolling down here to uh, download it from the latest releases. So download and install. Now, if you're on Ubuntu, uh, there's a quick fix here of what you can do to get it to run. Uh, in any case, uh, anyone else, just click here. You'll have to click here anyway to download your Linux dis uh, distribution for the Linux. Um, I'm gonna click on my Mac. It's the one that I'm gonna grab. And Once you download it, you can easily just click and drag uh, your the Tilly Wiki icon into your applications directory and run it. I've already uh, placed it in my applications directory, and what pops up is this. It's uh, we can put this browser away because uh, now we no longer need a browser to run and edit the Tilly Wiki. Uh, you just click on the Add a Tiddly Wiki file. I'm going to click onto my desktop. I'm going to click on the Tiddly Wiki file here. And we're open. Again, I have to drag this in from the other screen here. So here we are. We're at a Tiddly Wiki and we're all set to go. Any changes that you make to this Tiddly Wiki, um, is uh, now going to be saved to uh, this file. There is a huge advantage to this. When you save changes to this file, what gets created along with this file is a directory. It gets created in the same uh, directory that uh, your actual file is being housed. But what this folder is, is a backup of your TiddlyWiki. Every time you make a change to TiddlyWiki, it creates a new file. Now, when I first, when I first looked at this, I'm like, I don't want 100 files uh, created every time I use TiddlyWiki. But there is a huge advantage to this. It's, the more you save these files, it's more like a time machine. You can even get in here and just delete a group of them if you don't want, you know, a million files in there. That's fine. But there is a huge advantage to keeping, you know, 20 or so of your previous files uh, here in this directory. Because inevitably, you know, I've deleted notes that I've needed. And I can always click on any of these HTML files that are saved. And they're virtually... Uh, 
as till your uh, notes in whatever state it they were at the time that this uh, save file was taken. Also, a huge advantage of this is that you could copy all of this, throw it to you don't have to put it on your desktop. You can put it into Dropbox or a Google Drive, and and now you have your notes on a cloud. One of the things that the TillyWiki uh, can do, and I think I'm in the wrong program, uh, you click on Tools, Set Password, and now this file is encrypted. And so our I would go ahead and delete this and move to trash because that's not going to be encrypted. Uh, those are the safe states of wherever they are, whatever they've been saved at. But now that this is encrypted, so when I go to open up this file, did I not save the encryption? Do, 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 set password. Oh, maybe I have to check that. Oh, and save changes maybe, right? No, save changes. Yeah, save changes. There we go. So I've just saved that with the encryption. Close that up. And now here I have the encryption. And this is another thing with Tiddly Desktop I probably need to explain. And uh, if I can remember the password I used, right? Uh, when you click this checkbox here, uh, these are the tools, and uh, when you check the boxes here, these are the tools that will display up here, and one of the tools is Save Changes. Now, when I click on Save Changes, um, it's uh, going to be creating a file here. So it's going to be a backup. I don't really need to check this box in order to to use it because uh, all checking this box does is place the items up here. These items could still be used by clicking on the button. In any case, I have to say that uh, I haven't looked back at the Firefox plugin. I have been using this uh, Tilly desktop exclusively to work with uh, my Tilly wiki. And, I, you know, that just the backup alone is a huge advantage. One nice thing about this uh, desktop, too, is uh, you can uh, cre actually create multiple... Uh, wikis and place them in here and uh, they can be in different directories uh, you know these all are encapsulated and are different so there isn't just one tiddly desktop directory that all the files have to be placed in uh, another thing that uh, to keep in mind with tiddly desktop is that you know if you're on a dual monitor or if you're on a monitor and you've you've got a laptop and you're mobile, you might have placed this window way up to the top or to the side, or it may be on a different monitor. And when you get to, um, you know, you're working in a coffee shop and you're trying to pull your TiddlyWiki window, it might be inaccessible. Uh, the way to fix that is by clicking on the settings. You know, I have to drag this over. Open up the user config folder. Go to the user config tiddlywiki, tiddlers, and delete the shortest file here the, that ends in wikiless window. And what that does is that uh, th these are the configuration files, and this is uh, the file that saves where your current window is currently located. So, like, I'm going to go ahead and move this to trash. So, when I open up tiddlywiki, uh, it's going to plant that window into the middle of whatever screen 
uh, the, the, your main screen is. Again, I, I have some other tutorials that go into more detail on how to use uh, TiddlyWiki. This is pretty much just an um, introduction to using Tilly Desktop. And it, it's, uh, there, all of the settings uh, that you normally would use with the t your TiddlyWiki are all accessible. I, I think the only drawback, if you're like me, even though I, I, I'm pretty proficient at uh, having several uh, tiddly wikis and, or t several tillers and, and uh, you know, I have a hierarchy of how those are all set up and they're easily to get, get to. Um, I still have several tillers that are, you know, a mile long. And the one thing that you can't do with uh, uh, the one thing that you can't do with, uh, unfortunately, with Tiddly Desktop is to search in page. You can search for pages that you're looking for, and oh, you know there isn't any Tiddly actually created. I can go ahead and shut this down and write in created. And it's, here's my match. Um, I, I can open them up, but again, if these titl uh, titlers are a mile long, you can't search in page with this. That's the only thing that I really missed about the, the Firefox, but everything else is, is solid. Um, I, I probably won't use uh, TillyWiki with uh, uh, the plugin anymore just because um, Mozilla hasn't really played nice with me. In any case, uh, I hope this video is useful and encourages, encourages you to use uh, TillyWiki. It's, uh, you know, it's an amazing little feat of technology here that uh, you're going to find insanely useful for uh, you know, a lot of different applications.